Hi everybody, Adam Steele here, and last week with the Produce Like a Pro Academy, we got onto the topic of backing up your work, and that was a very general video that was generally saying you should have, you know, multiple drives and multiple copies of backups, including off-site backups. Today, though, I'm going to get quite Reaper-specific and show you some of the ways that I have everything set up to kind of automate a lot of backups, make sure that things are ready so that if a project crashes, I have backups that I can go to. If I accidentally deleted a file out of the project, I can go back hours or days later to previous versions and open all that up. Also, having backups of all the media uh, immediately, then secondary by backups, offsite backups, and obviously copying projects at the end. So let's dive in. Before we do, this is also part of the Ultimate Reaper Guide, which is a course that we have with ProMix Academy, where I talk you through from start to finish, first firing up Reaper for the first time, all the way through to recording and mixing every element of a mix, including how to use all the inbuilt tools in Reaper and some extensions and things like all the backup settings like we're going to do here. This is just a short section to demonstrate the kind of thing that we go over. Now, on with the show. Now, this is Reaper as I have it set up. I have a slightly unusual configuration, but it's still the stock theme. Everything looks fairly normal, apart from this whacking great console meter up here, which is a video that also just went out on the Promix Academy channel, if you want to check that one out. Now, a lot of what I want to set up is before we begin at all. This is a brand new project, it's completely empty. So I'm going to go into the options menu at the top, and I'm going to go down to preferences at the bottom. And that pulls up lots and lots and lots of settings, which are all in this list. I'm going to start at the top with general. There are a couple of things I change in here, but one thing that I don't tick that you might want to tick, if you're uh, really interested in making sure everything is backed up, is there is a tick box here for save undo history with the project files. That can get quite big, file wise but if you tick that box and then hit apply any time that you do anything in reaper that could hit undo next time you open up the project that all gets loaded again so if you feel like you are, are kind of coming back to a project the next day as if the computer has crashed and you're just carrying on as it were if there were any last minute changes you didn't you want to undo them you'll be able to press Control z or apple z and that will magically work. Now, paths. This is another thing where you can choose defaults to save new projects, uh, default render and recording paths. I tend to leave all this as default, but when we get into the project, this is where it gets a little clever. Now, for me, this keeps every version of that file every time you hit save another backup is stored in that reaper backup file now let's say your project file is only i don't know two megabytes it's not that big that's not including the audio files that's literally just the little file that tells reaper where everything goes what the effects are automation not the actual sounds that's great but every time you hit save if i hit save a thousand times that's a backup file of 2000 megabytes, so two gigabytes. Now for me, that's fine, that's priceless. That's the kind of thing where if I hit save every five minutes, and I do, then when I come back to this, then what I can do is I can open the Reaper backup file and they're in there as a giant list timestamped. So the date and the time of every save are in there. So let's say, for instance, I'm recording a band and I've, I'm recording a song and we're tracking and a weird error happens. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's a glitch. Probably my fault, let's be honest. And one of the really good takes gets deleted and then the guitarist has gone home never to return and it's now eight hours later and we've saved the project a hundred times. Fear not, we can open a new project tab in Reaper with a file new project tab 
and we can then open a project and we could go to a repo backup file in this option here, find the backup and let's say this, this file, open it. That will give me timestamps of everything I can pick. Let's say we know the guitarist was there eight hours ago. So chances are it's there. We'll find one from eight hours ago. Open that. Is the file there? No. Let's open one from nine hours ago. Is it there? Repeat until we find it and then copy and paste that item or even that whole track out of the backup into the current project. It saved me several times. It's not the kind of backup that is like, you know, save to another drive kind of backup. It's a whole different kind of backup that really can save your skin. The other option, if you don't keep multiple versions, is you can tick timestamp backup. And that will, instead of having one file with everything in it, will make a backup version of the file that's got a longer name with the time and date in the name of the file. That makes a lot of files, a lot of small files. I'm not a big fan of doing that. I prefer doing it the other way. There's also keep undo histories and at the bottom save undo history, which are, like we said earlier, if you tick those, that will save into the file all of the undo data so that you can come back and undo it. I personally don't do that because I find that uh, whenever I hit save, I'm assuming that whatever I was doing is now being committed. But if you want to do that, cool. And below that, I have every 15 minutes I have defined when not recording. Or you can change that to when stopped or when any time. So even when recording, um, I have it set to save a time stamped file in the project directory. So if I walk off, have a coffee, nobody's hit save in 15 minutes. Um, even let's say I'm mixing and I'm tired and I've forgotten to hit save because I'm being stupid. Every 15 minutes, this will save another version for me, whether I remember to hit control S or Apple S or not. And there's also something you could have, which I probably should set, which is save time stamped file in additional directory. I'm going to change that and add that right now because I really should. I actually have um, a folder in my Dropbox called Reaper, which I'm going to use right now and hit apply. Uh, there is also an option to save the actual project file every 15 minutes or number of minutes that you save. It does say not recommended. Um, there might be a reason you want to do that. I don't know. That's not how I would want to work. But the fact that I have a timestamped file means that if the actual project file itself isn't the most recent, I can still open the most recent one and go from there and decide what to do, whether I want to overwrite the project file or make a version two or whatever. So yeah, there are loads and loads of options in there. And the other thing that I can do in Reaper, let's find where it goes. The, the other thing is in file and project settings. Now, this isn't just for this project because you can set defaults in here, but in the media tab at the top, you can define the path to save media files to, which is something that I usually don't. But if you need a backup of all the audio being recorded as you go, you can browse to a folder there and you can add something, which again, I'm going to use that Dropbox folder. And so now by default, there is now a secondary recording path. So you can have a primary recording path, which is usually the project folder, whatever project you're running from. But in Reaper, you can define this per track. So if you were recording, say, five or 600 tracks and you don't have a hard drive fast enough, you could actually define half of them to record to one drive and half to record to another. But that's not the way I like to work. But yeah, by having set this secondary recording path, what I can do now is hit OK. And there's also save as default project settings, which is what I just did. That means that now any new project is going to have those properties. So let's make a new track and right click on the record button on it, the record arm button, because we can go into track recording settings. And at the bottom of this is record to audio path. We've got primary, secondary or primary plus secondary as invisible backup. So by selecting that, 
that means that now this is going to record two copies of this to the the project folder and to the place I defined, which is my Dropbox, which is actually on a separate hard drive to where my projects work, which means that if one drive dies, I still have a copy of all my audio. And because on a secondary bonus, I'm running all this into a Dropbox uh, account, the second when I'm recording that I hit stop, those files are immediately uploaded to Dropbox's cloud. And I also use Backblaze, which uh, periodically scrapes every file out of those folders as well and uploads them to my Backblaze account. So that means, I'm going to have to blur that out now because I had my email on it, oops. Uh, that means that I get two cloud copies of every file and that's before I get to hitting save and then when the project is finished, consolidate slash export tracks is always an option which trims things or a version that I like to do instead is simply file save project as and then I find a new folder for it when I'm finished and there's create subdirectory for project and copy all media into project directory. Now you can convert media there but I tend to leave it as WAV files but if you're doing long-term archiving, you might be thinking about file space. You could convert everything into, say, uh, FLAC, which are lossless audio files. So you still have the project in a lossless audio form, which means that then um, it, it takes a fair bit of CPU power to play. But it is lossless and you have a perfect quality of project to come back to in future. Again, not something that I do, but the project option is there. But by copying all the media that's in there as long as the same time as saving the project, that's a nice, quick, clean way of doing the kind of consolidating thing without chopping the ends of audio files off invisibly. So when I come back to the project in the future, if I do need to extend audio files and get longer fades or that kind of thing, they are all there and they've not been cut uh, as a trying to as a, an attempt to you know reduce the file size a bit. So there you go. There's loads you can do with Reaper and loads you can do with backups, and that is something that hopefully has helped you with your Reaper journey. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, check out the Ultimate Reaper Guide. The link is in the description below, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.